Hello and welcome. My name is Ranger Sandy Ferreira. I work for the Environmental Services Division with the City of Fremont, and I've been teaching the Clean Water Program for the last 13 years. You ready to go? Yeah! yeah. All right, let's go. Hear. Okay. Follow Ranger Alicia, follow Ranger Lori, and I'll be right with you guys. My name is Ranger Lori, and I work for the Environmental Services Division here at Central Park. I teach the clean water education programs and today I'm going to talk to you about our second grade field trip program which is called Garden Wonders, Critters and More. Our garden program's emphasis is all about pollinators and about teaching about wildlife friendly practices and what are the good things that we can do to attract pollinators to our garden. So when the students arrive, they have a seat in the garden, they come in, they have a seat in our outdoor classroom and each student receives a booklet a clipboard and a pencil. We have the kids sit down, let them take a few moments and kind of take in all the sights and the sounds of the garden. Because any given day, we could have butterflies flying above, we could have hummingbirds flying on the feeders, we could have ducks flying over us, we can have Canada geese flying by us. So all this excitement is all around. The emphasis of our program is um, animal and plant life cycles, specifically life cycles of some of the more um, familiar insects to them, such as monarch butterflies and ladybugs. I found another ladybug. I found another ladybug here. Oh, and another one there. And try not to touch the ladybugs. Um, we start talking about pollinators and life cycles, and we give them a few keywords to kind of study. For example, like host plants, nectar plants, toxic, pesticides, chemicals. We really want to emphasize those types of things in our garden. Students begin at our nectar garden here by the uh, native plants, and we first talk about that particular plant. And we have to you know, quiz the kids, can you identify a nectar plant? The nectar plant provides nectar for our pollinators. That would be like our bees, our butterflies, hummingbirds. And these flowers are positioned in such a way that the monarch butterfly and any other butterfly can land on them very easily and stick their tongue or proboscis into the tube and suck out the nectar. Then we move on through the garden. We stop at our water fountain and we talk about water, how important it is in our garden. And we talk to the children about elements that make a great pollinator garden. One of them being water, how you can add water to your garden for the birds and insects to come and drink and bathe in. After that, we go to the other side of the classroom and then we pull out the worm bin. That's an exciting time for the kids. The kids are now being able to look at how do we compost and why are we composting? And we give all the kids samples of worms or you know a little bit to hold in their hands. Some of the kids are squeamish, they don't want to hold of the worms. So in our composting bin, every child um, gets to, if they want to, have the opportunity to look at our compost look at the worm poop and see how wonderful our worms are working for us and how we use that compost in our greenhouse to start our plants. After we're done with this, the children all get a chance to answer their questions in their booklet on page one of what pollinators did they see in the garden today? What was it doing? How our garden helps to support pollinators in what ways? Um, what is the rain barrel used for? And um, counting the different insects that we have on our milkweed plants and it's really just a combination of all their observations that they've done in the gardens before we go into our lab. And at that point we had the kids sit down in the, in the classroom. Each student is assigned a hand lens. We usually have a live organism. On this particular day we might be talking about ladybugs and ladybugs life cycles. Not fooled by it? Yeah. How many do you think? Is it okay, so how many spots? Legs. Write down your number of spots you have. You have nine? Okay, oh, good. Okay. Let's go ahead and show his lady. Wow. Nice job. Nice, guys, nice, guys, guys. Um, we're going to do our survey. Okay, and then Deanna said she doesn't have to do any tilt, too. I see. It's kind of like spider legs. Once you move it, it hangs upside down. Once you guys use it, you have to 
aromas and stuff like that. So the point of the oil butterfly give off those smells to attract the females. And then at the end of the program, then it's that time for the kids to earn their Garden Heroes badge. So we have the kids raise the right hand and recite the pledge. And then they earn this really cool Garden Heroes badge that says City of Fremont Garden Hero with a ladybug on it, which is more or less our motto for our, our program. By planting host and nectar plants. By planting host and nectar plants. I will encourage others. I will encourage others. To do the same. To do the same. Ready? 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 Be a bug watcher. Be a bug watcher. Be a bug watcher. Congratulations. Give yourself a hand. You all earn your garden hero badge. Hi, I'm Deanna Stem from Briar Elementary School and I teach second grade here in Fremont. This program here at the Nature Learning Center is wonderful. This is the second year in a row that I've brought my students here and one of the reasons is the wildlife, even though it's just butterflies and birds, it's things that my students do not typically see in their houses or their apartments. We can, uh, we can, make, we can put rain barrels out there so we can easily get water sources from nearby. And you can also say, and you can also put a bird bath in to invite hummingbirds or other animals to just drink off or just take a bath. Um, it just helped me learn more so I could be a great scientist when I grow up. I really like this field trip. What I like best about the program is the excitement I see in my students' eyes when they learn something new. And also when I go home, I think of things that I can do at the school or at my home to bring the pollinators into the area. I really feel our clean water education programs are so successful because we provide those great learning opportunities and hands-on activities for our kids. Kids love to be out in nature. We can see that when they hike through Starbucks Lagoon Nature Area. We can see that when they're back here in the lab. By providing those learning opportunities, getting kids excited about nature, we've got them hooked. They love, love, love our program. If you'd like more information about our program and you'd like to register for a field trip, you can contact the City of Fremont Environmental Services Division either on our website at www.fremont.gov or you can call our office directly at area code 510-494-4570.